Hello, it looks like we are live. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, I am joined for another episode of this uh, Master's Spotlight. I am joined by Amy Hayes, one of the directors of recruiting um, for Georgia Tech Scheller College of Business. Um, she's going to walk us through a great presentation today, um, and then we will have some Q&A towards the end. So if you have any questions um, that, that you get from watching the presentation, feel free to throw them in, and I will talk to you guys soon. Uh, Amy, I will go ahead and hand you the mic. Awesome. Thank you, Brendan. Um, excited to join y'all today. Like you said, I'm Director of Recruiting for the Full-Time MBA program. I appreciate your time today. It's my pleasure to represent Scheller College of Business. I'm going to speak at a really high level of all of our program offerings, um, but I'm going to dig in a little bit on the MBA, Return on Investment. That's my job. Um, so I'm going to push that a little bit into all of you. I hope that that's of interest to you. And then we're going to wrap up with what's such an asset to all of our graduate programs which is our location in Atlanta and Tech Square. Um, and I'm joined in the chat today by a current first year student, Scott Spencer. So Scott is manning um, the Scheller MBA account. So if you see him on there, he's um, responding to what he can and help answer questions as well. So I want to, again, just start with a high level overview of what we offer at the Scheller College of Business in terms of our master's programs. And we have two interdisciplinary MS programs, and those are quantitative and computational finance um, and analytics. And so I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and then we have our MBA programs. We offer three different formats, um, and those are going to require work experience. So to start off at a base level, as you look at programs, you are going to have to have postgraduate work experience for all three of our MBAs. So as you think about timing, you want to consider that. And we have the executive, which is a 17-month program, evening, which is um, a part-time self-paced program, and then the full-time two-year program. And then lastly, we have PhD um, programs with emphasis areas that are listed here. I'm not going to go into those today, but there's a great um, transparent website where you can get in touch directly with the program director if you are interested in that doctoral work. But moving forward, I will reiterate that, again, MBA Arena is my specialty. I'm just going to do a quick overview of these two MS degrees before we get into the MBA talk. But um, the quantitative and computational finance, known as QCF around Scheller, is going to be smaller in size, a little over 30 or so came in the last intake. It's interdisciplinary, so it's a culmination um, of the work of three different colleges on Georgia Tech's campus. So as you can see, the sort of innovation that goes from the best and the brightest of all of those college areas coming together to form the program is really cool. Um, and it's STEM designated. You can complete this um, only on campus. So this is an on-campus program you'd have to relocate to Atlanta for. Um, there are January and August intakes, um, and you can kind of pace it at either one year or one and a half year um, program. So I've, I've put the email for direct um, questions to their program in the bottom right corner of the slide. So be sure you reach out to them if you have questions. And again, from the Scheller College of Business website, you can um, navigate to the QCF informational pages with great information about how to apply the class profile and things like that. So moving on to the analytics program, which is probably one of our most popular and a skyrocketing uh, globally known program is our, our data analytics and business analytics program at Scheller. And so um, analytics, again, is an interdisciplinary program. It's STEM designated. So that's a culmination of the College of Engineering, Computing, and the Business School. And that's um, two different program formats with the analytics degree. You can complete it on campus, um, and that's going to be a one-year program, and it's going to have a little bit more hand-holding in terms of job placement, job fairs. They're going to help you finance some conference travel, so it's a little bit more immersive. And then we have the online um, format, which is going to be completed in one to two years. Um, and it's, you know, allows people from all over the world to participate in that online program. So it's huge, a huge cohort of people are completing that. And then there's three different curriculum tracks. So you can specialize in the three areas that are listed here. Um, and my recommendation for getting more information on how to apply is to visit this website, analytics.gatech.edu. Um, they have a contact form there that they prefer um, to funnel people through as they just navigate the huge interest in that program. Um, so definitely visit that if you get some time. I wanna mention briefly that we do have dual degree MBA program. Um, so you can pursue an analytics master's uh, alongside or right after or right before your MBA. So there's, um, there are some programs that we partner with where you can tack these degrees on. So I do wanna mention that. I'm not gonna dig into all the nuances involved with that. 
Um, we have a great dual degree FAQ page on our Scheller College website. So if you go there, look under degree programs, you can find FAQs on dual degree. Um, but I want to move into my world, which is the MBA world. Um, and when we move into that, I just want to back out and think about, help you think about um, information you should consider when you're choosing your graduate management education. And an MBA is going to offer well-rounded growth in terms of your career, your network, and your overall potential. And we're going to talk more in depth about the career services and how we'll build out your career advancement in the MBA setting. But I want to emphasize here how an MBA might be the best investment if you're looking to fully pivot into a new industry or role. You're going to have a chance to fill knowledge gaps in a wide variety of areas, but also go deeper into that functional area or concentration that you're looking to obtain a job in. It's going to demonstrate to future employers um, that you can add value in that desired role. Um, and then the personal relationships and networking within the MBA is what most graduates probably say is the greatest takeaway. So beyond, beyond your classmates, um, your MBA alumni are going to be very engaged and supportive in your journey. So it's just a different sort of community makeup than other graduate programs, I would say. And lastly, the MBA is going to help you really develop your personal brand and your executive presence. I think it you can walk away with an MBA a little taller with some confidence to take on whatever problems come your way with the toolkit that you get. Um, from, from your classes. So moving into um, what makes a Scheller MBA special. So hopefully MBAs piqued your interest and you're moving into what's special about Scheller. Um, and I would say that we offer a high quality, globally recognized program at a really great value. So among our peer programs, um, Scheller is available to you at a much lower cost with additional funding opportunities, um, meaning the ROI is gonna come a little faster. Um, and next, we are known for emphasis in technology and innovation. So that isn't to say that you have to want to pursue a career in technology or you have to have a technical background, but we're going to help you approach problems with an understanding of how technology both complicates and can help solve problems. Um, we offer a robust experiential learning opportunities. Um, we're going to talk through those practicum classes in just a minute. Um, and then lastly, our career services team is outstanding. They leverage very strong corporate partnerships to help open doors for internship and post MBA job opportunities for our students. And they work really closely with our alumni as well to make sure that you have a connection with any organization that you're considering in your search. I'll help you get your foot in the door. So I think that's a huge benefit. So now I hope you think you wanna learn more about Scheller because I'm gonna dig into the three MBA formats and kind of talk through the differences. Um, so like I mentioned, we have three programs delivered in these formats, daytime, evening, and weekend. And as you see here, the pace of these programs are different, as well as when you can enter the program. So those are definitely things to consider when you're considering fit and like when you're starting the application process, those types of things, taking the GMAT, all of that. Um, the timing is a huge piece of that. And you can see the difference here in how you'll navigate the curriculum. Um, we have um, the full time or the evening program, which is self-paced and usually completed in about two to three years, but you have up until six. So if you're glutton for punishment and want to drag that degree on uh, for six years, you can do so. But it's definitely self-paced. Um, I myself am a participant in the evening MBA program, just started doing that part time and I'm really loving it. And it's not too much to add on uh, to my plate. I've really enjoyed it. And then you can customize the curriculum and take advantage um, of a large opportunity of specializations within both the full time and the evening formats. Um, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, I would say moving through this next slide, which I should have already advanced, you can see the differences in the specialization. So the executive MBA is going to just have two specific tracks that you can choose from, and that's global business or management, and then um, global business or management of technology specialization. So you move through those tracks as a cohort. So your entire executive MBA class is navigating curriculum through one of those tracks together. And then the career services between the three are going to be a little bit different. The full-time program is super intensive. You're going to walk through on-campus recruiting potentially and, and a lot of things that they have in place to make that a successful pivot if you need that. But then the career advancement within the evening program definitely has the same benefits and opportunities as the full-time, but it's geared to sort of be to, to come and take advantage of what you need because a lot of the evening students are not going to opt into on-campus recruiting. They're just gonna to wanna to advance at their current organization perhaps. Um, so you do kind of have to be more proactive if you're an evening student to get engaged in some of those more intensive pieces um, that our full-time students walk through. And then when it comes to executive, it's gonna be a more specialized career service experience where you're gonna figure out 
you know, if you're looking to just, again, gain a leadership position in the, you know, career that you're in, or if you're pivoting or whatever the case may be, you'll have really great high touch um, career services there. All right. So um, while I'm on the call today, like I mentioned, I, if I'd be remiss not to do my job, which is to recruit for the full time MBA program, um, which I think is a good backbone to kind of understanding all of our programs and just the culture of Scheller. Um, so I do want to start by talking through the, uh, the full time MBA curriculum that I mentioned is the, the two year program um, in the full time format. So as you can see here, this is the layout of our 22 month program of study. It's a total of 54 credit hours that's split between 21 hours of MBA core courses and 33 hours of electives. It includes a summer internship, which is the biggest differentiator among the three programs is having that chance to immerse yourself into a new field or functional area or your dream company or whatever the case may be. That internship is, is huge for the full time um, benefits. Um, I want to say loud and clear that you do not have to have a background in business education to be successful in our MBA program. Um, it's designed as, as if you've never seen it before, even if you have a robust business experience. It's going to really bring you through a core coursework um, in your first semester. Um, you're going to move through it as a cohort. You're going to be assigned a group um, that's going to have you know, maybe four of you in it that have really diverse perspectives. Scott's an engineer I mentions in the chat. So he's probably paired with people who have a less technical background so that they can all lean on each other's expertises and help each other with their weaknesses. So that core coursework in that first semester is going to be what kind of levels the playing field. So for people who are seeing business coursework for the first time, that's a place to kind of um, to gain the foundation that you need to move forward into your electives. So you're going to tackle classes like accounting, finance, marketing, you're going to get into leadership development, organizational behavior, you're going to cover business law and ethics. So a lot of things are going to happen that kind of give you that foundation in that first semester. And it's intense. I think anyone would say that first semester is the toughest as you get used to time management and kind of settle into things. Moving into your spring semester, you begin to take your elective coursework and you can choose between those 33 hours um, round out to 11 elective courses that you can take. Um, and so when you are choosing those classes, you have the flexibility to choose anything you want. But we do have a guide to kind of navigating those electives because between our full time and evening program, you can take classes in, in both areas. It's about 60 electives to choose from. So it can be very overwhelming, just like this slide is probably overwhelming. There's a lot of text here. Um, but these are the, our concentrations and immersive tracks that you can specialize within the full time MBA as well as the evening MBA. Um, and these, again, these are just a guide. You don't have to take advantage of these roadmaps. You could completely just choose whatever classes sound interesting to you every semester. You could take the flagship classes that everybody loves, like negotiations and consumer behavior and uh, those types of big data. But then you can move into other things that sound interesting to you. Um, but other people come with a roadmap and they say, oh, I really know that I want to build out my analytics skills. So I'm going to dig into an immersive track um, in business analytics. So I want to do a quick differentiation of concentration versus an immersive track. A concentration is comprised of three electives in a respective area, whereas the immersive tracks is going to be three elective classes in a certain area plus a practicum elective, which is what we're going to talk about next. And that practicum elective is a designated project based learning class. Um, so, yeah, wanted to point that out. Um, and if you screenshot this, you can also find it on our website with a list of classes that kind of count and make up these concentrations and immersive tracks for a better visual. Um, but I just wanted to be robust in letting you say, see all of the great um, specializations you can have within an MBA. So I mentioned the practicum classes um, and those are our project based classes. It kind of gives you experience as if you're a consultant. You're going to be paired with a company for a semester long project that you can put on your resume as real professional work experience. Great exposure to executives and to people that work at these companies. Um, and these are some, some logos of some of the companies that partner with us. Um, so some really awesome experiences that our students are able to have through practicum coursework. Um, I want to point out here that I've put in gold the strategic management class is that's a that's a um, core class that you're going to have to take. So that is. Um, a guaranteed practicum experience and then anything that you want to take um, otherwise will count as elective so you can take as many as you want for as, as many elective spots as you have. Um, another really popular practicum class is going to be our international practicum and that's the opportunity to work with an international 
corporation or partner where they're going to be looking at taking their product or service to market in the U.S. And so you're going to help advise them on how to do that. Um, and in a perfect non-pandemic world, it involves travel over the spring break to go and work with your partner. So really great opportunity there. We've worked with companies like uh, I think in the last grouping, there was Japan, Argentina. We typically always have a partner in Israel because of their rich startup community. So some really cool opportunities there. Another popular one is nonprofit consulting or pro bono consulting. So if you have a passion for helping nonprofits or just learning about the problems that they face, um, you can definitely participate in that as well. So it's really cool. Atlanta has a great uh, network of nonprofits that we partner with um, through this and through other ways with the in the college. All right, and I'm going to keep things rolling by letting you know another thing that kind of runs tangentially alongside the curriculum is leadership development. And we have an innovative leadership development program called Charge. Um, and it's definitely unique in that it's kind of like a fitness tracker for your leadership or your MBA experience. It's sort of um, um, it helps you stay organized with the experiential activities that you can participate in. So it gives you these frameworks and strategies and techniques to sort of aim that uh, to develop a principled leadership. Um, and it definitely is a cool way to kind of just stay on top of everything. I always say that you have all of these demands as an MBA student. You have classroom and homework demands and group work demands and social life demands. And then the career services team is going to have you do some homework too. So in trying to stay on top of all of that, um, it can be easy to miss like really impactful speaker series or a really impactful, you know, bias training that you could be participating in. And this is just a place that you can go to make sure that you're doing um, all these activities that help you build out the four core competencies um, that we describe here. So I think it's a great way to just maximize your experience. And it wouldn't be Georgia Tech if we didn't bring some technology into it and have, have it based in an app. And moving into the community, I want to make sure you walk away with a little bit of sense of the culture of Scheller and the benefit of a fully immersive program. I'll share the ways that you can get involved in extracurriculars. When I came um, to work at Scheller and now as a student too, I, I definitely kept hearing that the, the community was collaborative. That was the buzzword. It's so collaborative. And I think I thought of it as competitive. You know, it's a tough school. It's a lot of rigor. It's really successful people and you can get imposter syndrome about it, but really it is a really collaborative place. Um, and we do an intentional intensive orientation process that you can get to know your classmates. So you walk in with a group that you are going to work with through the semester. Like I mentioned that we assign you a small group and then you'll build out your friendships from the people that are in your classes and the organizations that you join in your extracurricular experience as well. Um, and to give you a sense of sort of what the extracurricular world looks like, the Graduate Business Council is sort of the backbone of um, our social activities and, and the extracurricular things you can dive into. And all of these clubs and committees um, provide our students with professional development, networking, community service, cultural and social activities. So really, you name it, there's always something going on um, that you can plug into. And lots of people, you'll, you'll be exposed to this within the orientation you know, piece of things. We'll have showcases where you can understand what all these clubs have to offer you and what you can join. Um, and then I think a huge benefit that's missed sometimes on the professional interest clubs in particular are that you can learn about a career in a certain field as early as your first semester by attending these club meetings where they're going to have professionals come in and speak on a panel about their, you know, the work that they do and kind of how they've built their career. And so you might get exposed to maybe finance before you've had a chance to take a finance class or you've been get exposed to people in supply chain when that has piqued your interest, but you don't know a lot about it. So I think they have great value more than just the social side of things, but in the professional um, development and, and figuring out your career path. Um, I should also mention they also offer case competitions. So as you want to continue to, you know, build your professional projects and experiences you can talk about on your resume. These case competitions are awesome ways to work with a group on a consulting issue. And we have really successful Scheller students who represent us at these competitions. And um, win amazing awards. And it's, it's a cool piece of things too. All right. And the last area is talking about career services. So circling back to that career development piece that just adds great value to an MBA, our career services team is going to help you in the internship and job search process. They're going to work really closely with you to provide expert coaching, professional resources, and effective tools to help you explore your career options, 
um, work on your marketability and just proactively manage your career search. You're also going to be a support system when you are, you know, pulling your hair out and, and really stressed in the process. They are super personal, wonderful people. And they were recognized for it just last week. We were named the number two full-time MBA career services team in the world, um, which is amazing. Our team is amazing. They, um, I think it's unique because our career advisors are also corporate relations managers. Those are not two separate roles in that office, which means, you know, that our, um, our career advisors are going to be direct contacts with recruiters. They are going to be the ones that um, are able to kind of balance both sides of the experience for you working with students, but also working with those corporations to have um, the best insights into trends and kind of where opportunities lie for our students. Um, and here's a list of things that you can expect from career services within the MBA. Um, and I want to point out some unique things here. The West Coast Tech Trek is something that's offered every winter. In December, we have a group of students who sign up to go and visit companies on the West Coast, whether it's the Bay Area or, or they've also gone to Seattle in the past. And they visit with Scheller alumni who work at these companies. So it's just really cool to see people, to meet people in person who are going to help you get your foot in the door and to see a campus's culture, these organizations that students are targeting in their internship or job search um, really gives them a leg up. And then the last piece of things, you probably hear it a lot, lifetime career coaching, but I just want to make sure that you don't miss the importance of that, especially in COVID um, times. We definitely have some alumni who have had setbacks and have come back to the Career Center and really taking us, taking us up on that offer and had a very supportive team to help them re redirect their careers. And then I know you want the money slide. Everybody is always anticipating this slide. Um, and I just want to say about career um, sort of stats and where our students land um, that our top three functional areas of MBA um, jobs for our students are consulting, marketing and corporate finance. Those are kind of the top three pieces of the pie, but we have a wide variety of roles that people uh, land in post MBA. Um, about a third of our students go into consulting, um, but we have, again, a wide variety of placements. And then with our list of recruiters here, that's a very limited list. Um, being that we're a little bit smaller of a program, we are able to, uh, we do see kind of a more diverse portfolio of companies where our students go each year. Um, and this is our class of 2019 featured here, but I do not want to slide. I, I put this slide up because that is a more typical year, um, but the class of 2020 was very similar to these stats. I think our employment rate was still in the 90s um, and they actually had a little bit higher um, average base salary. So that team really pulled it out in a challenging time. I think their average salary was like 121,000. So um, really commendable, but we did feature the more typical uh, job market there. All right. And this is the really last chapter. But again, I think the biggest asset for Georgia Tech is being in Atlanta. And for Scheller, it's being in Tech Square, which is what I'm going to talk about in just a second. But first, to just plug Atlanta and hype up what it's like to live here because it is wonderful. Um, it's a large city, but really has great Southern hospitality. People are diverse and progressive. Our food scene backs that up. There's always something to do. Um, so it really has the benefit uh, of being in such a big city, but sort of the um, the neighborhoods give it smaller community feels. And Atlanta, um, as you can see here in this picture, Georgia Tech is nestled right in the heart of Midtown Atlanta. So we're not on the outskirts. We're in the heart of the hustle and bustle. And it's a fun place to be located. Scheller is tucked away just a short walk away in Tech Square, which is what I'm going to show you next. Um, but what I appreciate most about our city and living here, uh, I guess about a year and a half, I've lived here a year and a half. Um, I really appreciate the green spaces of the city and the fact that you can be at a national forest or a state park in just a really short drive away um, for a weekend hike. We also have mild weather, which makes it possible to take advantage of these spaces year round. So I really appreciate that. So that's my fun plug for Atlanta. Um, but I'll get back to business and, and point out some of the highlights of what makes Atlanta a global center for commerce. Uh, there's a lot of growth happening here, and it supports our ambitious MBA community with the right energy and opportunities for capitalizing on the Atlanta network of alumni, as well as the Atlanta organizations, the home team companies that really love partnering with Georgia Tech talent. I mentioned that Scheller is located in Tech Square, and that is a little piece of Midtown that is um, a large, large part of its Georgia Tech's campus, but a lot of businesses have formed around Tech Square to tap into that Georgia Tech talent, like I mentioned. So Tech Square is the hub of Atlanta's startup ecosystem. 
So it's in Midtown where many businesses are located. We have startup ventures, large companies, and higher ed all sort of collaborating to impact economic development. So currently there are 22 corporate innovation centers in Tech Square. Um, there are 38 in Atlanta. So that gives you a sense of 22 have come to Tech Square for to set up shop. And that's where companies like Delta, Home Depot, Coca-Cola, Chick-fil-A are working to solve the biggest problems that their businesses are facing in the heart of the innovation of Tech Square. And then we're right next to, and if you if you missed the star on my map here, I know it's white, it's kind of hard to see, but the star is where we are, where our building is. Right next to us is a new um, 17 story high performance computing center called CODA. Um, and that houses a mixture of both Georgia Tech and industry entities. Um, and also right around us, are the ATD Advanced Technology and Development Center, which is one of the world's top tech incubators. We also have Venture Lab, which is Georgia Tech's um, university-based incubator and, and ranked second um, it's for that. It's amazing. It hosts a startup competition each year. And many of our students in the MBA who have entrepreneurial um, aspirations and have good ideas have brought them to Venture Lab to begin to grow um, to grow that. And we had two M MD MBA students last year who had dual degree Morehouse School of Medicine um, students who are in our MBA program. They um, started a business through that. So lots of cool things happening. Again, it just helps to have a really cool energy in the ecosystem around us and, and gives you exclusive insight into what companies are working on. All right. So lastly, it's just a little bit of info. I'm going to breeze through this, but just a little bit of info about applying to the MBA. Again, I don't know the specifics of the application processes for all of the master's programs, but I do know full time. So I'm going to tell you about ours. Um, so when it comes to deadlines, we do still have deadlines available for fall 2021 start. We just wrapped up our round three deadline. We're moving into interviews for select candidates there. Our interviews for the full time MBA are by invitation only. Um, and the dates are listed on the website for those interview dates. Um, but we do still have two remaining deadlines. So if you're interested in the fall 2021 start, it's not too late. Um, we have the round four, April 1st, and round five on June 21. I will say at this point, if you're an international candidate, you would be best suited to wait until the fall 2022 cycle um, and, and apply in an early round there. Um, just as we keep going, our spots are getting more and more limited and um, the ability to get a visa in time and things like that are constrained. Um, so it is recommended at this point that international candidates wait until next cycle. Um, in order to apply, I want to give you a sense of what, how you need to get organized to start the process. And these are our application requirements. So we do require transcripts. You can start with unofficial ones just to get the ball rolling on your app review, but you'll want to get official ones eventually. Um, and then we, like I mentioned, we do require work experience. I'll talk about average there and everything on the next class profile slide. Um, but we will want a resume outlining that work experience. And don't stress too much about the resume, but there's lots of resources online about MBA um, resume formats that you can find easily. And when it comes to writing essays, we require three essays. One is going to ask you why an MBA and why specifically a Scheller MBA. And then the other, the second one's going to ask you about your short-term and long-term career goals. And then the third is a fun facts essay. We're going to truly just want 10 fun facts from you. Um, and I think when I went to apply, I got about four facts in and I thought I'm no longer interesting. I can't think of anything else. So I crowdsourced it with my friends and family. And it was kind of fun to reminisce about, uh, about my childhood and things like that. So definitely put some, um, put some thought and some fun into the fun facts. We don't want your resume. Again, we want fun things that give your application texture. Um, and then we do have an optional essay where you can fill in the gaps on anything. So if you had a, a gap in your work experience or if you didn't ask your um, you know, boss for a recommendation because you're not ready to reveal to them that you're thinking of entering a full time MBA program and leaving your job, those types of nuances can be addressed in that optional essay. Um, and then the test score piece of things, we accept the GMAT or the GRE and we also have a test optional um, process that you can opt into when you apply to ask you, would you like to be considered without test scores? You can check the box and tell us why you think you can demonstrate your quantitative ability without test scores. And on our website, we have an FAQ page. It's going to really help you assess whether or not you're a good fit for that because you really want to have a strong, you know, quantitative undergrad experience or really strong um, coursework or really strong work experience that's quantitative. Um, so there's some things that you would want to have if you're going to go test optional. 
And then lastly are the letters of recommendation. We prefer um, that you submit two of those. We need at least one to get the ball rolling on reviewing your application. So just make sure that you manage that process well, that you ask the right kinds of people for uh, to speak highly of you and that sort of thing. And then lastly, um, before we get into questions, I'll just show you a quick snapshot of a class profile for our full-time MBA. Um, we're typically a class of 85 students really proud of a 40% makeup of, of women. And we're um, always working to grow the statistics and the, you, the needle on enriching our uh, experience with more diverse students. And so um, we are really proud to have lots of special populations that we're focused on recruiting, including veterans and US minorities and just students who will bring, um, again, great experiences and um, great perspectives to our class discussions. Um, I mentioned work experience. I want to call that out here. About five years is the average work experience for the full-time MBA. Um, you really want to have at least three years of full-time postgraduate work experience to enter our program. We, we really just say that because a lot of hiring managers are going to put a three-year minimum down. So if you don't have those three years, you're not going to be able to achieve the outcomes um, in the career process that probably attracted you to the program when you saw those average salaries and those types of things. You want to be best set up to, to achieve those. And um, to do that, you need a solid foundation of work experience. And so we have had some students come in with two, but most of the time it is um, full three years. And then you can see our average test scores and GPA to just make sure you're kind of falling in a, in a close range there. So I hope you might be able to see yourself in our community, um, whether that's in an MBA or other graduate programs. Thanks for your time. I'll let Brendan move into questions, but feel free to email us. I have the email here. If your questions don't get answered, we can do follow up afterwards. And I'll leave this up you can move forward. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Amy. I'll leave this up for just uh, a couple seconds to let anybody uh, wanting to grab that email. And then uh, remember, this uh, this video will be posted. So if you, of course, want to go rewatch it again, you can. Uh, but thank you so much, Amy. You provided a ton of information uh, during that presentation. And I also saw uh, someone in the chat answering a lot of the questions as well. Um, so it, it seems like we're, we're doing well here. I actually do see a question that just came in. Um, asking about a first MBA that they had. Uh, they did a Bachelor of Engineering in 20, 2006 and a first MBA in 2009. Um, what would you suggest about someone who already maybe has an MBA and is looking for another one? What is uh, Georgia Tech's uh, view on that? Yeah, so if you are an international candidate and your MBA is from outside the U.S., we will consider you in admission. If you already have a U.S.-based MBA, we don't accept anyone to come in and do a second one through our program. Okay. Fantastic. That would be good to get out there as well. And then um, I do have questions on extracurricular activities because this is a big one that always comes across is um, what are some of the maybe more unique extracurriculars you've seen um, that really help kind of individualize the candidate? How, what are some extracurriculars that may make them a bit more unique when they're feeling um, maybe just either overrepresented or, or that they're not, uh, that they're not standing out. Yeah, well, I'll answer your question, but I will say too, in terms of great perspective on, on that, that you don't stand out or people that don't list all of their extracurriculars because they think they're basic or run of the meal. But if you're involved in your community in any aspect or you have passions or all of these things make you who you are, tell us about those things because I think we're gonna get to that. If we interview you, we're gonna hope we dig into some of those layers anyway. So being able to put that at the forefront of the process Say, this is who I am. I'm super involved in the LGBTQ community. I'm super involved in my ministry, my church, or whatever it is that, that makes you who you are. Tell us about that and don't come back because um, that texture is really important. And again, we're building a really small program and we, we're curating people that are going to be collaborative um, and will bring different perspectives. So all of it's valuable. Oh, fantastic. No, that's a, that's a great point too. Um, I know, yeah, some people may feel that those extracurriculars may just uh, kind of go with the flow of someone else, but not putting those is a disservice. So thank you for clarifying that. Um, I do see another question in the chat about, um, I don't think it'll double up the banners. Okay, good. Um, someone has a work experience of a lot longer, around 15 years. Is an MBA is still a good, uh, a good thing for them to pursue or should they look at maybe an executive MBA? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, my initial feedback is that an executive MBA is designed for higher level um, ex years of work experience. However, in this you know past couple of classes, we've had people with over 15 years who have been admitted to our program for really unique circumstances. So if you're looking to completely reinvent your career um, and you've 
great work experience and great networks, but we feel like you're, you really want to be fully immersed in a in full-time experience. We might consider you, but most often um, we do encourage that executive program to put you um, in conversations with people who have had similar experiences in their career so far. Fantastic. Great points. And uh, with with the, the differences in this year's application cycle, as we know, we're going through a very interesting time and uh, things are changing both from uh, interviews going remote to just the overall applicant pool being a lot different. Um, we have the question of what have you seen kind of in the application um, cycle this year? Are there any changes that you kind of anticipate to the, the general makeup of the class? How do you see that moving forward? Yeah, um, we have definitely seen a growth in applications. So we have a steady growth in all the rounds. We've seen more than more applications than we've had in the past um, year. It's been interesting to see, excited about the, the rejuvenation of, of MBA interest. A lot of introspection, I think, is happening in quarantine around the world, and people are thinking about how to better themselves and move themselves forward. So we're excited about that. And I think in terms of what it does to the applicant pool, interestingly, you know, this year I mentioned we are hitting a cap for international students, which we typically you know, we encourage that early application for international students in general, but we did have some deferred students who couldn't get visas last, last year who were carried into this class. So we kind of started with a bigger foundation than normal. So I'd say that was a difference. Um, we are more people opt out of testing or just not have the ability to test for various reasons or trying to expedite the timeline and not wanting to take the GMAT or the GRE. And so when we have such a small class and so many people opting out, it's sometimes little bit more pressure on the higher scores for our GMAT candidates because we're still trying to maintain um, our quality of GMAT average and things like that. So there's some interesting dynamics happening around the admission committee table, um, but there's so much opportunity. Don't let that scare you. It is competitive. There's lots of applications, but um, but definitely a lot of opportunity and a lot of programs where you can find fit. Fantastic points. And I think sticking on the, uh, as we were talking about the uh, the international students, what has, uh, can you kind of specify what you've seen maybe in the job market for those, um, for those individuals? Um, oh, that was the admissions one again, but we'll, we'll stick with the job, uh, the job process as well. What have you seen in the career market for international students coming to the U.S.? Yeah, well, I can't speak to as well as our career services team, but from what I understand and what I've seen them um, help our students achieve has been incredible. Like I mentioned, our class of 2020 placements, they still endured some of them getting job you know, offers rescinded and things like that when things were very uncertain. They were able to bounce back and to pivot their you know, career search and end up at companies. Uh, we had an amazing student who her offer was uh, rescinded from Delta and she went forward to achieve a job at Apple. So, I mean, when that's your fallback, you're doing a job. And so I think that there's lots of students with similar stories to that. Um, we've definitely watched the trends as consulting is so popular. We've watched the trends on um, if you need to be an intern in order to get hired at that consulting firm now because they've shifted their focus in hiring. We're paying attention to those trends and coaching our students to be flexible, to be open minded and to, to go where there's opportunity. And so I think our team does a really good job of helping our students navigate an uncertain market. That's fantastic. And that's, that's good to hear. It's good to have those resources when uh, times are getting a little, little bit more uncertain uh, or uncertain as we move forward. But um, coming back to a bit about the application process in general, um, where can someone go if they want to understand about the, the scholarship opportunities, if there's a fee waiver that they're able to get, uh, where can they find that information and are you able to provide any now? Yeah, absolutely. So to, to talk about a fee waiver, yeah, if you, um, for attending this event today, if you email us at the MBA at sheller.gotech.edu, I don't know if you got all that, but it's on our website. But if you email our MBA team, we will um, be able to set you up for a fee waiver. I will say, though, you want to have started the application process before you ask for a fee waiver. You have to have started the application for us to apply it. We can't do it ahead of time and then wait for your application. So I just want to give you that caveat. When you're ready to apply, mention that you attended this. Um, and and when it comes to scholarship opportunities, we do have two types of funding at Scheller. Um, we have scholarship dollars that come off of tuition, just like a scholarship, free money, as I call it. And we have GRA positions. As a public research institution, we have graduate research assistantships to award. And that's the opportunity to do really meaningful work on campus alongside your MBA experience. Um, and so that's a really cool chance to work towards your, um, to put towards your tuition. So if you have a partial GRA, it covers half of tuition. If you have a full GRA, it's all of tuition. So amazing chances to win that as well. Um, and then we have some students who have a combination of both who are really top scoring, you know, top profile candidates are going to potentially get GRA and fellowship dollars. So really cool chance. There. And I should say you have to apply separately. So every candidate that comes across the admission committee table is going to be considered for fit. Um, can they be successful? Can they handle the 
rigor of the program? Can we get them where they want to go? Do their career goals align with what we have to offer? And if so, if we're, if we're all in, then what can we do to get them here and to invest in their MBA? Um, and then we look at fellowship um, allocation from there. Okay, fantastic. And, uh, and maybe sticking, uh, kind of coming up on time. So I wanted to get one more question specifically about the culture of, of, of Georgia Tech as well, um, because that's such an important aspect. How have you seen the, the culture maybe shift over uh, these current times, if you will, more virtual work? Um, has there been a major shift? How are students kind of coping with it? And are there still some big student events that people are going on? I guess, how, are, um, how have you seen that kind of uh, bridge and gap of personal Communication. Yeah, I think one thing I'll say about the culture of, of Georgia Tech as a whole is our commitment to science. And I think that has been really helpful at the time because we've had students who have respected the environment that we're in, have for the most part followed the rules that were set in place to keep them safe, and have participated in the amazing asymptomatic surveillance testing that we have free to free to students on campus at all times. And so our MBA students have tested regularly for surveillance testing um, in to do small group activities. So we've we've limited that community experience to just small groups. So whether that's friends going to a brewery or having a picnic um, in the park, or I think last Friday they did yoga at Piedmont Park. So doing some outdoor activities that, that can stay safe has been how we've functioned. And we've had a lot more innovative virtual offerings to try to, to bring the community together there as well. Um, so like I mentioned, the collaboration was already a part of Scheller, and I think it's just continued to bring people um, to be Positive and to approach uncertainty with confidence and, and to be flexible and pivot when needed um, in order to deliver the best experience and to have the best MBA experience if you're a student. Um, so it's been really cool to see, and I'm really proud of the way that our community has handled it and come together. That's fantastic. And that, that's great to hear. I know uh, a lot of people are uncertain about what that MBA experience is going to look at, look like, but it's good to see that the students at that Georgia Tech are taking that very seriously. So um, I do want to give you a chance before we close out, um, any final thoughts for those that are either uh, working on their application now, thinking about applying? Is there any just last minute tips before we head off? Yeah, just take advantage of, of access to individuals like myself who help in the admissions process for all of these programs. I know sometimes they're more or less accessible depending on what you're looking at, but if you do have the chance to communicate with students and alumni and really don't feel like you're cold calling, um, but getting, you know, more perspectives and your name might come across our desk before you apply. And then we can build that relationship. We can advocate for you more for fellowship dollars if we know your name. So just don't feel like you can't reach out and ask questions and, and connect with our, you know, students and alumni via LinkedIn, those types of things. Um, make sure that's a part of your search is to, to connect with individuals who are in the community. Fantastic. Great points. And, and I thank you so much for that presentation. It was a great presentation. A reminder to everyone watching uh, that this will be posted on our YouTube channel. So if you missed anything, you can go back, uh, rewatch it, as well as see uh, the contact information that was posted later in the slides. Um, but thank you so much, Amy, for the presentation. Thank you to our viewers uh, who asked some great questions. Um, and thank you to uh, the, the Georgia Tech member that is answering all of those. Uh, Good Scott. Scott, you've been doing a great job, um, and uh, he's provided the email as well, the MBA at sheller.gatech.edu, uh, so feel free to reach out there as well, but um, we're going to go ahead and close it out for today, um, but thank you again so much, Amy, we look forward to seeing you again. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks, Brendan. Thanks, guys.